If you've ever wondered what it's like to homeschool four kids, or just wanted to be a fly on the wall in our homeschool, you're in luck, because today we're gonna walk you through a day in the life in our relaxed Charlotte Mason inspired eclectic homeschool. Today, I thought I'd bring you along on a little day in the life video. This is just a normal day here in our homeschool, and I hope that you will enjoy seeing what we do. So right now, we just finished breakfast. So normally right after we're done with breakfast, our kids jump into their morning chores and then we jump right into school. Hey buddy. We normally start out the day doing math first, just because that is a totally independent subject for us. Our boys all use teaching textbooks, so that makes it really easy on me. Normally, while they are working on their math, I come back into the kitchen and just kind of tidy up after breakfast. I'll put away any dishes that were left over on the drying rack from the night before and just kind of tidy things up so that our kitchen is nice and clean for the day. Having a clean kitchen where we spend a lot of our day really helps me to just kind of have a little bit more peace in my mind knowing that there's not a ton of stuff just screaming at me that needs to be done. So I will always check and see if there's any other dishes that I can get in the dishwasher and get it started if it hadn't already been done by my kids. The kitchen is tidied up, the dishes are going. Now I'm gonna go in and see if the kids need help with anything and if not then I get started on working with our six-year-old with her language arts and math for the day. Are you starting already? No. No, just coloring? Yes. Oh, pretty. Do you want to go take your books and go put them on the table over on the couch so we can get started over there? We really don't do a whole lot of work at our kitchen table. I don't have desks or schoolroom or anything like that. Most of our work we do on the couch or um, up in the loft. We have a computer up there that the boys work on when they're typing and that kind of stuff. Otherwise, it's just kind of in our house, wherever we're comfortable. When you have multiple kids, we have four, and they're all at different levels, so it can be a challenge to stay focused on what each kid is supposed to be doing if there's a lot of noise going on. So sometimes it is helpful to go remove ourselves and be able to focus and work quietly in a different room. So right now, I'm gonna help Naya with her schoolwork while the boys finish up their math. Now we need to add up how many cents this is worth. Remember how much the nickel is? Five and Five and two cents. Is how many? Seven cents. Yeah. So are there any here that you can buy if you have seven cents? I could buy this one. Okay. Mr. So good. Whoop. Good job. This is Luba. Hi, Lou. Are you a good girl? Yes, you're a good one. You're a good helper, huh? <laughs> So you just finished your math? Mm -hmm. Yeah, what are you gonna work on next? I'm going to do history. So this year I made these binders for the boys that have their assignments that they need to do for the week. When it's time for them to do school, they just open up their binder and see what their assignments are for the day and they work off their list themselves. I have had several requests for a video about these binders and I do plan on making a full video about them, but we're only a few weeks into using them. So I wanna make sure that we kind of have all the kinks worked out and that we have got it working the best that it can for us before I share that with you. But there will be a video coming about our binder system. I don't know when, but <laughs> when we get it all figured out. We are using a gentle feast for our core curriculum for this year. It's a Charlotte Mason approach to homeschooling. And so our kids basically have different reading assignments that they do each day on their own. And then they will come tell me or narrate back to me what they learned from the lesson that day. It started talking about a merchant's son who was buying gifts for his family with three rings, Egyptians used rings as their currency. Okay. Usually, but they, but not by amount, they weighed them. And also, it says some things about Hatshepsut. And who is Hatshepsut? Um, a female king of Egypt. Yeah. Uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So, this is our school cart where we keep all of the stuff that the kids are actively working on each day. We have our morning menus, their journals, their book of centuries. And I'm going to show you this really quick. 
I love them because each page has the timeline already written in across the center. And so as we're reading and learning things, the kids will then write, let's see if I can find one. They will write in here names and dates of people that they are learning about. So we are doing, right now we're in like Viking times, early middle ages. So he wrote in here about the first Christian Norwegian king when he learned about him in his reading history. And so as we go through and study different time periods in history, each year, um, if something new comes up, they'll add it in here and then they'll be able to really connect what happened in different parts of the world during the same time periods, which I think is really cool. I will link these in the description below. And that's how we approach history here in our house. So with teaching textbooks, I have our kids go through and do all of the problems that they can on their own. And then if they have questions with any of them, then I help them out with those problems. So how can we factor these out now? Um, five times two. Uh -huh. Nine times broken into three times three. Uh -huh. so three times three. Help. Just a sec, okay? Times two times five. Yep. They do not love that do not show their love. <laughs> good, good job. We're also using the Good and the Beautiful's handwriting for Little Miss. This is an older version that might look different now than what this does, but it still works great. Book of the Ancient World. What are you working on next? History. Yeah. Can you go check your binder and see what else needs to be done today? Okay. Okay, so what do you gotta do? You can do... I have to copy down a couple you do of Bible exercises. Or you can work on your language arts things. Okay, so let's get started on one of those things. Lincoln, since you're done, can you read this with your sister? Okay. Help her sound out words. You guys are gonna go in the other room and work on reading that together, okay? <laughs> Lincoln's gonna help you out. <laughs> so Maddox is reading his ancient history and Evan is working on his language arts, literature, and Lincoln and Maya are in the other room not working on reading. <laughs> Like they're supposed to be. Mm. Mm -hmm. Matt hits the map. Yep. For doing what? Europe map drill. Oh, we're yeah, we're doing map today with morning time. So, speaking of that, it is ten o'clock. So as soon as you're done with that, we're gonna get started on morning time. Okay. Evan, you wanna get started on getting your snack together? Whatever you want. Make your tea if you're gonna have tea. Okay. Kids are already getting ready for morning time in here. So I'm gonna grab our maps here. They're actually laminated place mats. They're blank on one side and then the other side has all the countries and cities and stuff labeled. There you go. Thanks. Okay, so these work best when you use a wet erase marker because they have the finer tip and then they're less likely to smear off if your hand rubs on them. When we're doing our map drills like this, we have our kids label every country that they remember from different lessons that we've learned. And then each week we will add on another like three countries or something. This is her magnet board that she plays with sometimes while we're doing map stuff and morning time up at the table. So these are our morning menus that I put together. That's not an independent. On the back here. I have, these are the countries we're working on. So we do geography once a week, then I do some reading. Right now we're going through this Archimedes in the Door of Science book, as well as reading along in the Dangerous Journey, which is a children's version of Pilgrim's Progress. So this is what we're doing for morning time. In our morning menu, we're working on scripture memory, and we're working on memorizing Philippians Two verses one through 16. Okay, can anyone remember the Bible verse? So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, 
and being a full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. All right, so we're gonna read a little bit more about Archimedes. News of the challenge spread about the city until everyone was talking about it. When Archimedes announced that he was ready, King Hero named a day for the test. From early that morning, the docks were jammed with people, and so were the nearby rooftops. It looked as if everyone in Syracuse had come to watch the show. What did he do that was really cool in this lesson? He moved a ship? With a pulley. With, I can't hear you. With a pulley. With a pulley. So he, how did he do that? He twisted a pulley. He twisted a screw-like thing that had a rope attached to it. And a pulley was right next to it. And on the other side of the pulley, the rope was attached to the ship. So when he spun the pulley, it made the ship move closer toward him. That's cool. A lot of times the kids will draw pictures while I'm reading. Like has got a Viking going. That's pretty cool, bud. Yeah, I just run some and Naya's working with her blocks still. You're having fun with those? Yes. And I'm making a castle. Making a castle? Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay, so we just finished our morning time and um, I think that the mailman just brought something. So I'm going to show you what is out here. I'm super excited. Hey, guys. Okay, let's see what's here. Ah, dog food. <laughs> See, he wants to go play. And this is what I've been waiting for. You guys want to help me open this? Can you go get Zeke? Can you go get him? He ran out there. Can you call him for me? Zeke! Zeke, come! Too cold! <laughs> Stinker. Good job. What? I'm excited. Do you know what it says? What? It says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. Ooh, that's actually a book? It's a Bible verse. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Thank you so much to Tailored Canvases for the beautiful canvas artwork and for sponsoring this video. Tailored Canvases has tons of personalized wall decor that you can choose for any room in your house, any kind of vibe that you wanna create for your family. There's definitely something for everyone here. They had a whole bunch of customizable options where you can have like your last name, your monogram, all of that kind of stuff put on here. Each artwork is custom made and I was super happy with how quickly our order actually came to us. It, the quality is top notch. I had such a hard time trying to choose which artwork I actually wanted to order because there were so many amazing options. I actually picked about 10 different styles and then I had my husband look through and make the final decision because it's his house too. <laughs> and this is the one that he liked the best. He actually grew up with the saying on the wall in his house. And he really liked the idea of having this scripture verse on the wall in our house as well. So I couldn't agree more. I love it. I love how it turned out and I'm super excited about it. There will be a link in the description below where you can get a coupon code for 15% off if you want to order one of these canvases for yourself out of any of their designs. These would make an amazing Christmas gift or just something for yourself. I know that you're going to love tailored canvases. Okay guys, it's like 11:40. Let's go take the dogs for a walk out to the mailbox and then we'll have lunch, okay? Okay. I know. Let's go do it. Doggies need to go for a walk. When it's possible, I try to get most of our schoolwork done by lunchtime so we can have the rest of the afternoon to do other fun things. And we just kind of fit in some supplemental type of things in the afternoon, like piano or some extra reading, um, playing outside. Today, the older two boys have their speech class this afternoon, so I will be taking them to that in a little while. But right now, while they are taking the dogs for a walk out to the mailbox, getting some fresh air, I will clean up the mess here from our morning time and get started on lunch for us. Hi, Mom. Hey. How was your walk? Good. 
Sometimes we will watch an educational show with our lunch so we can get in some supplemental learning that I don't have to teach and I get to enjoy as well. And we have recently found this show called Ancient Impossible that goes through some incredible engineering feats that people did in the ancient world, which has actually tied in really well with the reading that we've been doing about Archimedes and some of his inventions. So that's been really fun to find and watch during lunch the last few days. The kids are almost done with all of their assignments. Lincoln is pretty much wrapped up. Maddox and Evan still need to do piano and then they're gonna be off to their speech class in a little while and I'm gonna finish up with Naya and we're gonna go through our geography lesson for the day. This is what a compass looks like. We turn it and it will point to the direction of north. Like if you're filming this in north and you got lost. Yep. Then you would know you need to go that way. Do you see where north is on there? That. Where's north? Can you turn it so you're facing to the north? Whoa, do you see how it's moving? Mm -hmm. Okay, which way is north? That Are you way. facing that way? Right there. Now we're facing north. Right there. So which way is south? If this way is north, which way is south? That way. That way, exactly. So you drew that on here? Yeah. Neat. That's really cool, bud. You guys playing Crazy Eights? Mm -hmm. And I think he's gonna win. You can do it. Aww. Ty, one and one. We just got him last week from the Humane Society. He's 11 months old. This is Zeke. So far, he's been an amazing dog. Oh, Zeke. I cut out the drawing that I made. That's <laughs> so cool. Thanks. We have about a half an hour or so until I need to head out of here to bring the boys to speech class. I'm gonna see if I can get this canvas hung up before we go. So excited. I love how it turned out. It looks beautiful. Thank you so much to Tailored Canvases. We are pretty much now done with our school day. I'm about to take the big boys to their speech class and while they do that I normally go to the coffee shop and have some time to kind of work out some ideas for my channel for some new video content and so that's my plan today. I'm gonna do that while they're at class and then we'll come back and finish up our normal day at home, but I'm gonna wrap up this video here because we are done with our schoolwork for the day. So I hope you enjoyed a peek into what a normal school day is like here in our home. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button below and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for watching, bye.